Well, all right, welcome back. And how about we dive in with another reading from A Grimm's Complete Fairy Tales? That's right. But first, we got to set the mood with the lights and get, and get that fire crackling and that hop a buzzing. All right. Okay, now let's dive in, shall we? Now, tonight we got us a little bit of a longer tale. So get you your bourbon, get you your snacks, maybe your chocolate covered raisins or a snack bar of sorts. I don't care. Just pause the video, then come back and we will dive in <clears throat> with the water of life. All right. A king was very ill, and no one believed that he would come out of it with his life. He had three sons who were much distressed about it, and went down into the palace garden and wept. There they met an old man who inquired as to the cause of their grief, and they told him that their father was so ill that he would most certainly die, for nothing seemed to cure him. And then the old man said, I know of one more remedy, and that is the water of life. And if he drinks it, he will become well again. But it is hard to find. And the eldest said, I will manage to find it. And he went to the sick king and begged to be allowed to go forth in search of the water of life. For that alone could save him. No, said the king, the danger of it is too great. I would rather die. But he begged so long that the king consented. The prince, thou, the prince thought rather in his heart, If I bring the water, then I shall be the be best beloved of my father and shall inherit the kingdom. So he set out, and when he had ridden forth a little distance, a dwarf stood there in the road and called to him and said, Weather well, away so fast, said the shrimp, said the prince, very heartily. It is nothing to you, and rode on. But the little dwarf had grown angry and had wished an evil wish. And soon after this, the prince entered a ravine. And the further he rode, the closer the mountains drew together. And at last the road became so narrow that he could not advance a step further. It was impossible either to turn his horse or to dismount from the saddle, and he was shut in there as if in prison. And the sick king waited long for him, but he came not. And then the second son said, Father, let me go forth to seek the water, and thought to himself, If my brother is dead, well, then the kingdom will fall to me. And at first the king would not allow him to go either, but at last he yielded. And so the prince set out on the same road that his brother had taken. And he too met the dwarf, who stopped him and asked whether he was going in such haste. Little shrimp, said the prince, that is nothing to you, and rode on without giving him another look. But the dwarf bewitched him, and he, like the other, got into a ravine and could neither go forwards nor backwards. So fair, haughty people. And soon the second son also remained away, and the youngest begged to be allowed to go forth to fetch the water, and at last the king was obliged to let him go. And when he met the dwarf, and uh, the latter asked him whether he was going in such haste, he stopped, and he gave him an explanation said, I am seeking the water of life, for my father is sick unto death. Dost thou know then where that is to be found? No, said the prince. And then said the dwarf, as thou hast borne thyself politely and not haughtily like thy false brothers, I will give thee the information and tell thee how thou mayest obtain the water of life. 
It springs from a fountain in the courtyard of an enchanted castle. But thou wilt not be able to make thy way of it if I do not give thee an iron wand and two small loaves of bread. Strike thrice with the wand of iron door on the iron door of the castle, and it will spring open. Inside lie two lions with gaping jaws, but if thou throwest a loaf to each of them, they will be quieted. Then hasten to fetch some water of life before the clock strikes twelve, else the door will shut again, and thou wilt be imprisoned. The prince thanked him, took the wand and the bread, and set out on his way. When he arrived, everything was as the dwarf had said. The door sprang open at the third stroke of the wand, and when he appeased the lions with the bread, he entered into the castle and came to a large and splendid hall, wherein sat some enchanted princes whose rings he drew off their fingers. A sword and a loaf of bread were lying there, which he carried away. After this, he entered a chamber in which was a beautiful maiden who rejoiced when she saw him, kissed him, and told him that he had delivered her and should have the whole of her kingdom, and that if he would return in a year, their wedding should be celebrated. Likewise, she told him where the spring of the water of life was, and that he was to hasten and draw some of it before the clock struck twelve. Then he went onwards, and at last entered a room where there was a beautiful newly made bed, and he was very weary. He felt inclined to rest a little, so he lay down and fell asleep. When he awoke, it was striking a quarter to twelve. And he sprang up in a fright and ran to the spring, drew some water up in a cup which stood near and hastened away. But just as he was passing through the iron door, the clock struck twelve and the door fell to with such violence that it carried away a piece of his heel. He, however, rejoicing at having obtained the water of life, went homewards and again passed the dwarf. When the latter saw the sword and the loaf, he said, With these thou hast won great wealth, and with the sword thou canst slay whole armies, and with the bread will never come to an end. But the prince would not go home to his father without his brothers, and said, Dear dwarf, canst thou not tell me where my two brothers are? Well, they went out before I did in search of the water of life, and have now returned. They are in prison between two mountains, said the dwarf. I have condemned them to stay there because they were so haughty. And then the prince begged until the dwarf released them. And he warned him, however, and said, Beware of them, for they have bad hearts. When his brothers came, he rejoiced. He told them how things had gone with him, and that he had found the water of life, and had brought a cupful away with him, and had delivered a beautiful princess who was willing to wait a year for him, and then their wedding was to be celebrated, and he would obtain a great kingdom. And after that, they rode on together and chanced upon a land where war and famine reigned. And the king already thought that he must perish, for the scarcity was so great. And then the prince went to him and gave him the loaf, wherewith he fed and satisfied the whole of his kingdom. And then the prince gave him the sword also, wherewith he slew the hosts of his enemies, and could now live in rest and peace. The prince then took back his loaf and the sword, and the three brothers rode on. After this, they entered two more countries where war and famine reigned, and each time the prince gave his loaf and his sword to the kings and had now delivered three kingdoms. And after that, they went on board a ship and sailed over the sea. And during the passage, the two elders conversed apart and said, The youngest has found the water of life, and not we, and for that our father will give him the kingdom the kingdom which belongs to us. 
and he will rob us of all our fortune. They began to seek revenge and plotted with each other to destroy him. And they waited until once when they found him fast asleep, and then they poured the water of life out of the cup and took it for themselves. But into the cup they poured salt sea water. Now, therefore, when they arrived at home, the youngest took his cup to the sick king and ordered that he might drink out of it and be cured. But scarcely had he drunk very little of the sea salt water than he became still worse than before. And as he was lamenting over this, the two eldest brothers came and accused the youngest of having intended to poison him and said that they had brought him the true water of life and handed it to him. He had scarcely tasted it. When he felt his sickness departing, they became and became strong and healthy as the days of his youth. After that, they both went to the youngest, mocked him, and said, You certainly found the water of life, but you have had the pain, and we the gain. You should have been sharper and should have kept your eyes open. We took it from you while you were asleep at sea, and when a year's over, one of us will go and fetch the beautiful princess. But beware that you do not disclose aught of this to our father. Indeed, he does not trust you. And if you say a single word, you shall lose your life into the bargain. But if you keep silent, I shall have it. You shall have it, rather, as a gift. <laughs> the old king was angry angry with his youngest son, and thought he had plotted against his life. So he summoned the court together, and had sentence pronounced upon his son that he should be secretly shot. And once the prince was riding forth to chase, suspecting no evil, the king's huntsman had to go with him. And when they were quite alone in the forest, the huntsman looked so sorrowful that the prince said to him, well, dear huntsman, what ails you? And the huntsman said, I cannot tell you, and yet I ought. Then the prince said, Say openly what it is. I will pardon you. Alas, said the huntsman, I am to shoot you dead. The king has ordered me to do it. And then the prince was shocked and said, Dear huntsman, let me live. There, I give you my royal garments. Give me your common ones in their stead. The huntsman said, I will willingly do that. Indeed, I should not have been able to shoot you. And they extended, they exchanged rather the clothes, and the huntsman returned home. The prince, however, went further into the forest. After time, three wagons of gold and precious stones came to the king for his youngest son which was sent by three kings who had slain their enemies with the prince's sword and maintained their people with his bread and who wished to show their gratitude for it. The old king then thought, Can my son have been innocent? And he said to his people, Would that he was still alive, how it grieves me that I have suffered him to be killed. He still lives, said the huntsman. I could not find it in my heart to carry out your command. And told the king how it happened. And then the great weight fell from the king's heart. And he had it proclaimed in every country that his son might return and be taken in favor again. The princess, however, had a road made up to her palace, which was quite bright and golden. And told her people that whosoever came riding straight along it to her would be the right wooer and was to be admitted. And whoever rode by the side of it was not to be the right one, and was not to be admitted. As the time was now close at hand, the eldest son thought he would hasten to go to the king's daughter and give him out as her deliverer, and thus win her for his bride, and the kingdom to boot. And therefore he rode forth, and when he arrived at the front of the palace and saw the splendid golden road, well, he thought it would be a sin and a shame if he were to ride over that, and turned aside and rode on the right side of it. And when he came to the door, the servants told him that he was not the right man and was to go away again. And soon after this, the second prince set out, and when he came to the golden road, 
His horse had put foot on it. He thought it would be a sin and a shame to tread on a piece of it. And he turned aside and rode to the left side of it. And when he reached the door, the attendants told him he was not the right one and was to go away again. When at last the year had entirely expired, the third son likewise wished to ride out of the forest to his beloved, and with her to forget his sorrows. And so he set out and thought of her so insistently and wished to be with her so much that he never even noticed the golden road at all. So his horse rode onwards up the middle of it, and when he came to the door it was open, and the princess received him with joy and said he was her deliverer and the lord of the kingdom, and their wedding was celebrated with great rejoicing. And when it was over, she told him that his father invited him to come to him and had forgiven him. So he rode thither and told him everything, and how his brothers had betrayed him, and how he had nevertheless kept silent. The old king wished to punish them, but they had put to sea and never came back as long as they lived. And that has been The Water of Life from Grimm's Complete Fairy Tales. I have an affiliate link down in the description for this bad boy. If you want to get your own copy or buy something to support the channel through the link there, greatly appreciate it. It serves that function as well. That's right. But hey, enough of that. Let's take us out, shall we? All right. I hope you enjoyed yourself and that Grimm's Complete Fat Tale, and you come back for another one. Kiss to the missus and a tip of my hat to your old cat. You take care now. You hear? You understand? Well, you better. I hope you do. All right now.